addition to my salary of 1.5 million, I'll have a free medical health cover when I am sick. That's what I'm saying. My goodness. My dear, do you think about this your salary as if you already there working? <laughs> you're so fast being contaminated with this your dream or sickness or whatever. Even if this were to be true, do you know how much their family they are going to give you cost? This man don't go in for business without gain. I once heard that the more they pay that much money, they turn around and get in the form of high bills, rates, and even in human life. Hey, 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 hey. Careful. Look at somebody who has never left this village. They are not even trust them. They should go by this village. Who told you all these things? Mother Sabin. I'm still explaining. You listen to me. Huh? It's so to be pushed for that. You are talking anyhow. It's not to be careful. The apartment they are going to give you is rent. Which means that you don't have to pay anything as far as the apartment is concerned. My goodness! Imagine 1.5 million for salary, plus 300,000 francs feeding allowance, plus 200,000 francs transportation allowance just in one month. A comfortable apartment and a car, plus a medical health cover. I have never held 50,000 francs since I was born. You owe 1 million! What does not really die twice? God help those who help themselves. I must help myself so that when I come back, I'll be able to fight this business in human part of What about you, Kiafon? Let's do this thing, nah. This is the opportunity of our life. I don't stop that too much. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. If there is this much money in this year that I do, where I see and parole, what is this man? The so-called what? So called Agent Stanley. What is this? What is he doing here in our village? He doesn't even look different from us. Hey! Careful! As if she has ever looked different in her life. Look at her. Look at her dress. As if she has ever looked different in her life. Yeah, that's careful. My sister, don't mind now. Any man for yourself, God will be up. My sister, listen. All you need is a photocopy of your ID card, okay. photocopy of your birth certificate, and money for your flight fare. They say goodbye to poverty. See, I assure you, blonde, you are going to be swimming in money. I want to see. Touch now, touch passport. You have never touched passport. Touch now. Touch. 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 Touch.
starvation, depression, I mean, no hope, and living in agony. Success in life is all about risk taking. Even in business, it is a grave that survives.
all of us in this community a terrible story concerning this accident. What is happening now is beyond what that man can utter. My own son left for this white of a thing, promising us that in two months' time we will be swimming in money. He told us about the salary, fitting allowance, dressing allowance. In fact, I don't want to remember them. I was forced to take a loan of 200,000 francs from Njangu and give him. We even sold the only piece of land we had in order to complete what he was asked to produce. Ever since he left, I have not heard a word from him. Now the Njangu is on my neck. Where do I get money to repay the loan I took? Not even a piece of land to sell. What should I do now? Should I jump into a pit or commit suicide and die? Hey. Now, what man? Hey, you are here, doctor. You borrowed yours from Mentangi. Where there at least no one you did with it. On coming back from a job in Congo, the mother of my two kids and me, my wife, made away with 2.8 million. As if that was not enough, she sold my farmland and even my motorcycle. <laughs> Tell me, how would I convince my little people that I did not use their money? The worst part of it is that they have even vowed to come and say that my daughter is my father, you know. Hey. In order to recover part of the money. Where would I go to with those my children? Where would I live? If you continue listening to each other's story, we will not even know who to sympathize with. Everybody in this community has a terrible story concerning this exodus. Even our chief, who is sick, who knows the cause of his sickness? Uh, I suggest we send someone to go verify on what is happening to them. And who do we send? Do you think it's the journey you used to make to you like to step on a not? Well, if you go, it's fine. Would you go? Would you? Yeah. Would you? Be not be offended. I am just worried about my situation. Where would I get money to pay for what this woman made away with? Go and look for it in my team. Yes. I don't just sit here and put our star. I hear that that agent Stanley just brought me to the community to ask what? And then they now recruit and send me to one and for a team for free. So that when they start working, they will then pay for the expenses and cure getting them these places. Yeah. Many women from this community, even married women, are already registered with him. Wow. Let's stop them! No time to talk, please. And come here. If you want to save your life, get some help to boys and put on this agent Stanley of a man and bring him here. If he tries to resist, show him the stuff you are. Oh, I'm very, very strong, you know this. Oh, come on, let's go. Let's go. Get him
Where do you say they are? Where do you say they are? They, they should be in the houses now. So they should be now. See? This one can wait. They don't hear from the houses on now. Please go, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Never seen. 
another housemaid from the next house be shot to death by her madam. I am sure her family back home does not know about her death. Maybe they think she's out there in Whitey, making good money and forgetting about death. As families back home you think. I went to the street like a mad person, crying. And all of a sudden, my eyes became dizzy and I collapsed. I was later on told that the police ambulance came and picked me up. They gave me some drugs they bought at the hospital. And that is how I came back, not knowing how the arrangement for my departure from Whitey were made. Imagine the shame I had when confronting my family and friends like a papa. He 
immediately get my passport and pressurize me to check in. When I had checked in, I came out to ask him some few questions concerning my flight, my contract. But to my greater surprise, I didn't see him. He wasn't picking my calls. Why? I never could tell. But I sensed something wasn't right. While we were in the air out of curiosity, I decided to check my documents. And before, my contract stipulated that I was to work as a housemaid instead of the company job I was informed about. This agent had forged my signature into this contract. The last time that I saw my passport was upon our arrival at the airport in Banule, where the policemen were checking our documents. My passport was then handed to someone I never knew. He then took me to a house and kept me with so many other girls. We slept on the floor and had very little food. After sleeping for a while, he came again and took me to a woman I was to work for. Immediately he left. Everything changed. The woman, my boss, confiscated my luggage, kept in her room and gave me just a uniform to put on. I slept on the floor in the kitchen. I did the cleaning, the ironing, took care of her five children. And when I was done working at her house, she would take me to her old Corazon father's house where I continued working for. I get up at 5 a.m. and go to bed at 1 a.m. with little or no food for the whole day. Most of them locked me in a tiny room and never talked to me. I prayed and cried until one day God gave me an idea. I needed to go back home to let my family know that I had arrived. When I called my brother, I explained everything to him in our dialect, which they never understood. Luckily for me, I had the contact of the agent who picked me from the agency when I had arrived. I immediately gave to my brother, who then called and threatened the agent. The agent then called a the woman, my boss, asking her to bring me back, but she refused. Asking for a sum of 1.5 million that she used in bringing me to Banule. I told her that I never had any financial transaction with her, that she would take me to the agent that brought me to her so we could settle everything there. On the day we were to see the agent, she forced me to the back of her boat. Arriving there, the agent took me to a house where housemaids that are who is working in other people's houses were being kept. There, a customer in need of a housemaid would come and make a choice from those of us that were there, like articles sold in the market. This particular man came and picked me. I lied to him that I had a family with seven children and that I would like to talk with them. I followed him the next day to a shopping mall where he bought me a mobile phone and took me to a restaurant. This was so strange. While at home, he started asking me funny questions and behaving so funny. This particular day, his wife was not at home. He left his room, came over, told me he wanted to have sex with me. I refused. But he forced me. Who said you? I got it. I mean something to him with me. When his wife came back, I told her I never wanted to work there again. But she pleaded with me to stay. The man said I wasn't going anywhere. For a fear that I was going to tell people what he had been doing to me. This particular day, the man came and forced me. I shouted, but no one came. <laughs> when his wife came back, I told her, explained everything to her. But she gave me a deaf ear. They were not bent on killing me. I ran out of the house and slept on the veranda for two days. I spent three days without food and without bedding, thinking like a ego. This man and his wife opened my box, took all my documents, my ordinary level and advanced level certificates, my birth certificate as well as my national identity card, even the little money that I had. They took everything. I was left with nothing. I was then taken somewhere where they signed some papers and later on sent me to the immigration office. They sent me in the immigration prison for one week. Then I tried to explain to the officers that these people have taken all my documents, but they never listened to me. 
They gave me a deaf ear. I was later all sent to a deportation prison. There, I don't know how they managed for my flight back home. But the only thing that I came back with was my passport and the torn dress I had on me. My dear brothers and sisters, take a good look at me. Am I not worse than my friends who stay back and work in their farms? No. <laughs> This is the moment for us to discuss, all right? Everybody, you and I, we have heard about sexual exploitation out there. Yes. How young girls are being forced at gunpoint to have indiscriminate sex. sex with men who are old enough to be their fathers. And how some of them finally get infected with HIV. And some are impregnated. We have also heard about job insecurity out there. The cleaning of wild animals. How some of these girls, they work for very long hours without pay. I mean, without a combo. We have heard about food deprivation, confiscation of documents, restriction of movement, and even murder, just because of what? Greener pastures. Ladies and gentlemen, please, I just want to find out from amongst us, is there anybody who has ever had such an experience just feel free, please. Is there anybody in the hall who has heard about somebody traveling out of the country clandestinely and then something bad happens to him or her? Yes. Please, can you tell us the experience? Please, can you? Thank you so much, Ms. Kamala. Good evening, everyone, and happy new year. Good evening, everyone, and happy new year. Yes, happy new year. Thank you so much. I not that I personally know the person, but I jump into this video on YouTube. The girl was expressing her experiences in Kuwait. That was between 2014, 2015, after she had an advanced level, and there was this pastor in Limbe that you had to traveling to Kuwait and she was forced to clean 14 uh, a story building of 14 floors a day and do other house chores with, with little or no food as these people were explaining here and she had to run out of the house back to the agency in Kuwait and it's, uh, there is no Cameroonian embassy in Kuwait that could help her so she had to go back to the agency and they sent her back to another house where she was taking care of about four adults. And one of them even tried to rape her and stab her on, on her thighs. Then she ran out of the house again to a, where a Cameroonian helped her. From there, they took her to the immigration. Then a bishop and father helped her travel back to Cameroon in 2017 or 18, like that. That, that was the story. Thank you for sharing this experience. Are you getting him? No. My name is Taranga Martin Boris. All right, Boris, can you tell us your own experience? Yes. Uh, please, I will speak in English and French. So, uh, um, it's not like my a brother, which is uh, that we don't have the same mother. So, I had a brother who was uh, always thinking about traveling to one work in a, a foreign country. So, one day, as he is doing buildings, he was used to work and then having um, a petit salaire. So uh, one day he get on, he got online, and then he 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 facilement lui trouver les travaux de maçonnerie de gauche à droite. Et puis, once he got there, they told him you need a passport, you need a good ID card. 
and you need uh, a lot of financial issues for you to go and stay there. Good. But if you don't have the money, there is a way that we can help you. Alors, il se met dans le, 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 le protocole, il commence à faire les papiers. Mais quand il voyage, il arrive dans le pays là, ce n'est plus ce qu'il partait faire. Il arrive là-bas, on lui dit bon, ok, as you, you look like a good builder, yes, are you a carpenter, yes, but yeah, you are not going to do carpenting, you are not going to do buildings. Et puis bon, il dit, il dit, bon, ça se passe comment Qu'est-ce que sinon il veut faire Et ici on dit bon gars, comme tu vois là, as you already here, you cannot go back. How, can I, how can't I go back? You cannot go back. They say for you to go back or to work here, there is something you must do. They show you something like this. Bon, il était épais étonné que qu'est-ce que cela signifie. On lui dit non, pour que tu puisses travailler ici, là, il y a un code. Et tu dois faire partie de la société telle que les, les, les règles sont prescrites. So, he asked for three days to think. He gave you 24 hours. And why give you 24 hours? They, they removed his ID card. They took his passport. Then he cannot fly away. <coughs> Alors, pendant qu'il était en train de dormir, he just said something like, Ama, behind. Something touched him behind. Bim! Then he shot my mother! <laughs> <laughs> he shot him. But he was too late. Because when he looked behind like this, he met some, somebody, I'm not even super costaud. The monsieur me prenait quatre fois, il était comme ça. And then there was, there was something very, very dangerous in front. And they touched him. They touched him very well. They touched him until he was unable to walk. By the grace of God, he was praying. He was asking God, please, show me a way to escape from this dangerous place. And then one day, as our Almighty God always do his thing. He hide. He catch beaucoup de choses. Quand sa gloire veut s'accomplir, ça s'accomplit. Then he hid away by a younger of 12 years old who was in the dans la société là. Then the younger took him right at the frontier, and then he went and he came back. And went. So that was the story. Yeah. 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 Well, do not exist. Women and girls are more vulnerable to being tricked into sexual bondage. Just making sex trafficking to easy and quickly proliferate. Oh yes! Millions of women, men and children are being kidnapped, virulently mistreated and sometimes murdered, all to facilitate cheap and free labor and sexual pleasure. It is happening right here, right now, in countries all over the world, including our own country. <laughs> the child, man or woman, that you underpay because he or she is poor. The house girl that you recruit to take care of your kids, who that one becomes your cook, your washer girl, and even your banya is a trafficked person. Yes. Trafficking in persons is modern day slavery. There's no time to waste. Action and action now. Yes. Action and action now by identifying and rooting out agents in the hideous business of human trafficking. Yes. Action and action now. Human trafficking is a crime against basic human rights. Sex trafficking, rape, prostitution, kidnapping and every illegal or every physical, any, any physical abuse are all illegal. Yes, action now by improving the economic and social status of women. Yes, action now by regulating and enforcing anti-trafficking legislation. Yes, action and action now by creating an enabling environment where economic activities can thrive. Oh yes, action and action now by always speaking out against the use of human trafficking. Slaves, stop and you kill in Bayou, Whitey and Banule. Take immediate action to release this girl and allow her to return home. Yes!
audience of art, which is to do what? Educate, entertain, and please. And yeah. inform you. Have we been entertained? Yes. 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 Educated. Yes. yes. Give them. Yes. Have they made us to laugh? Yes. yes. Give them again. So, ladies and gentlemen, give one more call. And the way to present themselves so you know them. Let me say something. If you look at this cast, this is their first time of performing. None of them is doing theater, I think one or two. All of them, they are novices. Did you find anything lacking in them? No. No, no sound. It means that they can do it. And we can do it. Yes, theater action now, everybody. Yes, theater now. Yes, action now. Yes, action now. Right. We begin from. <coughs> Take care, you come down. Present yourself, your name, and the role you play, please. Good evening, everyone. My Good name evening. is Vanessa Benyoy. I play the role of Kiafon. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. My name is Maibo Fisheri. I play the part of the weaver in the village. Very good. Good evening, everyone. I'm called Kekuma Selin. I play the role of Anna. Nice. Have you forgotten that man, man, she's <laughs> No body was found. Don't in the garbage. We need steam. Holy roof. Yeah. 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 My name is Rita Angel Gold, aka Mama Africa. I played the role of a village woman. Oh. Oh. Good evening, everyone. Alright, I am Bomad Raiza. I played the role of Kinyoi. The girl was trying to convince the others to go out. Good evening, everyone. Beauty design. I am called Ebusa Ruzan. Oh. And I played the role of Lord. The girl whom she convinced to go to YT. Yes. <laughs> I'm not getting you. I play the role of only the, the chief. The, the, the woman who was crying for the loss of her child. Oh. <laughs> The 
one who knows how to do documents. In fact, the one facility. Everyone that is going to YT, Balule, always moving with my office in my hand. So I'm called Kemen Gilbert. Thank you. Are you excited about Babana Airline? No! Are we going to use Babana Airline after this? No! I will marry the short girl! Oh, you marry the short girl? No, I am called Gunga Emmanuel. I play in the light technician and I acted the role of a comedian, the stand up comedian, and I go by the stage name Andre Teng Teng. Yes! Oh, workshop that we did, meaning that you seated there, you can be a great actor or actress. I want to thank you all guys for coming to share with us, to chat with us, to enjoy theatre. And I want to pray that coming here today is going to inspire you more and you are going to make it a habit of always being into theatre. There are some particular people that I have to appreciate specially. <coughs> There's somebody who left Wala this morning just for this performance. And uh, he'll be going back tonight. He's representing HTM Pro. Mr. Leather Simon, please. Can we give a hand? There are so many of such, but I will not waste your time for you to clap after each person. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much, and uh, do have a wonderful evening. Mr. Chitabi, thank you so much. This is one of the people who initiated me into the theater, and he's still holding my hand along the way. Thank you so much, sir. The knowledge you imparted on me is the one I'm still using to impart on others. Thank you so much. Shut up, There is one other important person who has not come to the stage. Please. There are two of them. Franklin, Wanchin, and the uh,